Hello everybody, today we wanted to showcase a deck with a color combination that is very much unused. Red Blue Control is a deck that Super JJ and the rest of the Complexity crew brought to the recent We Play Tourney, ending up in the top 16, proving its competitive viability and JJ's skill as its pilot. Combining the mid-range unit power of red with the powerful removal tools of blue, being at any cost and annihilation, this deck gives up Mono Blue's late game consistency to fight formidably for the board early. Tired of playing reactively? This is the deck for you. It's controlly, aggressive, and has panic buttons for when things go wrong. Let's take a look. There are two versions of this deck that JJ played at WePlay, both equally good. We will have the deck code for each in the description below. But for this video, we will focus on the first version. As usual, let's begin with the heroes. In total, three good red heroes and two good blue heroes. Kana here could either come out on the flop or the turn. Coming out on the flop could prove handy as a majority of the blue cards are 3 or 4 mana, and if you have two blue heroes ready in two lanes when you have 4 mana, you can play cards in both. Additionally, Kana would pull in melee creeps to her lane earlier. However, if you want Kana on your flop, then you need to have Axe coming out last, again, because you want to play those blue power cards. On the other hand, Kana on the turn gives you some more flexibility. You can choose where Kana goes to maximize the chances of her flooding the board quickly and pushing overwhelming damage. Additionally, since all the flop heroes are red, you won't be forced to pick two out of the three lanes. One other benefit is that Ogre Magi comes out on turn two, implying that even if he dies instantly, you still get to play an additional card. Then he will come back right on time on turn 4 when you have 6 mana for that juicy annihilation. In fact, you actually want Ogre Magi to die on the same turn that he comes in. I personally like this hero lineup a lot. Kana provides the board and Ogre Magi provides the multicast. The only thing to consider is if you want 3 blue heroes instead of 2. The third blue hero could be either Luna or Zeus in the slot of Axe. This would also mean that you need to change the card ratios. Currently, this deck has 23 red and 17 blue. So if you switch the hero colors, you need to flip those numbers around. First easy change would be switching up initiative gaining cards to your primary color. Arcane Assault replaces Fight Through the Pain here, and since it cycles, you can have multiple. The game plan of this deck is pretty simple. Fight for the board, clear any lane that is running behind, and finish with Time of Triumph. Red Green Ramp hates giving up a lane early as it can't fight a wide board. Lucky for you, going wide is a piece of cake here, and this deck can fight in any lane it wants. In fact, having Kana and three red heroes makes fighting all three lanes simultaneously a strong possibility. So don't give up a lane completely, respect all of them. But maybe give the left lane a little bit more respect for obvious reasons. Let's look at some of the key cards. Bronze Legionnaire, Stonehall Elite, and Dimensional Portal are always the best openers, getting that early chip damage into the tower. Three copies of each can cause your opponent to waste their removal and leave them empty-handed in the late game. Sure, at any cost and annihilation are staples, but why not add Conflagration to the mix? Conflagration gives you a better chance to defend lanes, and paired with Ignites, it can reduce the board quickly. Smash their defenses and Fight Through the Pain are your tech slots to fit in cards like Conflagration. So pick something that fits your prized play experience. Foresight is almost a tech card, but I personally prefer to have two or even three. JJ cut it here since he wanted three Smash the Defenses in instead to counter the rise of improvements. He also cut one Spring the Trap and one Time of Triumph as well, but I personally wouldn't do that as they are pretty powerful cards. However, more testing will be needed. Additional tech cards such as Enough Magic, Cunning Plan, and Compel can be added depending on what matchups you want to beat. Moogie Baby tried out Bolt of Damocles on stream as an alternative finisher, and it could end up being a solid pick for the deck. Now let's move on to a very unique card in this deck. Routed used to be a bizarre meme at launch that was sometimes toyed with as a one-off in very aggressive strategies. However, it has been seeing more and more play lately and fits perfectly in this deck. For an optimal play, it needs to hit three or more heroes. It is rare for mono red, red black, or red green to have three heroes in the fountain, or you having the mana and opportunity to cast Routed. But with the power of Annihilation, you can have multiple heroes there, with the right timing as well. Jasper Daggers does counter Routed effects on a hero, but we never see more than two run typically, so usually Routed will get some value. Something you also will have to do is look far ahead to even two rounds in advance to get value. So count your damage in lanes and try to account for basic creep spawns as well. The item deck is pretty standard. Signet Rings are present as your heroes get constantly dueled, Berserkers called, and annihilated. Stonehall Cloaks for late game scaling, and Jasper Daggers and Blink for versatility and mobility. Ignite is not used for just removal. Since this deck doesn't have Diabolic Revelation or an Emissary of the Quorum, if you want to build a huge number of Hounds, sometimes you will have to use Ignite to get a good number out of your Prey on the Weak. Although this could be considered a control deck, depending on the matchup or your hand, you might have to be the aggressor. Against Mono Red, you are more likely to play as a control deck, protecting all of your towers. But against Mono Blue, you will have to be the aggressor and try to push as much damage as you can quickly. 
Typically, you hold off on using your duels for better turns, but against Mono Blue, you can jam it on turn 1 or 2 if you feel it'll give you a bigger advantage. Against Red Green Ramp, again, you will need to be the aggressor, since they will accelerate to Time of Triumph or Emissary of the Quorum faster than you do. Focus on getting Kana a wide board to exploit their weakness. Red Green will be a tough matchup since you don't have as many clears as Mono Blue does, but if you plan on facing it a lot, a copy of Bolt of Damocles might make this matchup a little bit better. The Red Black Midrange matchup is another tricky one. They have initiative gaining cards, their heroes survive at any cost, and they can kill your heroes easily with gank or coup de grace. Basically everything that can go wrong, goes wrong in this matchup. There isn't really a specific way to beat this deck, so just be careful against the cards we mentioned and try to play around them at all times possible. The aggressive version of Red Black with Sorla Khan and Tinker is a bit easier to deal with, especially if you have multiple smashes to cycle and get rid of their assault ladders. Use your creeps more defensively here, blocking your opponent's damage. Worst comes to worst, at any cost does a great job against Sorla and Tinker. And that's it for Red Blue Control. A less common color combination for sure, but with a lot of its potential proven with this last tournament result. Give this deck a try, it has something for every type of player. And let us know your version of it. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.